So like, what do you think you would say to someone about marriage? Who is like, what do you think about marriage? Um, yeah. Of course, the first one, don't rush into it. Don't rush. Take your time. Don't rush. Yeah. Especially in Indonesian culture, it's totally different than here. I think in Indonesian culture, uh, you are encouraged by the family, society to get married in your 20s. Early 20s? Early, early middle 20s, when you're in mid 20s, families, friends already started to Do ask questions. Do you think, is it the same pressure on men and women or is it? I think it's kind of the same. So it's sure, just yeah. on? It's, it's just on the same pressure um, because the expectations, you went to college after college and then you graduate from college at 21 or 22 yeah. and you find a job and then you try to work for two or three years and then now it's time, okay, so time to get a family. Time to start a family. <laughs> because also like most of my friends, they already got married. Now they have 10 year old kids, 13 years old kids. So so I was like, okay, I'm so behind. But I think uh, at that time, I, I, I just didn't want to rush into it. I just didn't want to rush into it. Just, and just be content with yourself. I mean, teman-teman kita uh, di Indonesia kan banyak tekanan gitu. Jadi sebaiknya, Jangan menikah karena tekanan sosial. Just don't. Just, jadi untuk teman-teman yang punya uh, keluarga atau mungkin kalian punya uh, teman yang belum married yang masih single, you don't try to like pressure them to to get married soon because you gotta figure out what you want. You gotta try to ask yourself, be honest, and then ask yourself if you are happy or not being single. If you are not happy being single, just don't expect that you'll be happy be married yeah. that's like a rule number one try to try to take it slow and also uh, learn more about yourself i got married i'm younger than you right <laughs> yeah jadi saya teman-teman saya menikah di usia saya yang sudah 35 dan itu sudah banyak waktu itu pun sudah banyak or, orang keluarga sudah eh kapan kamu kapan kawin kapan kawin kapan kawin kita bertanya ke teman-teman kita yang masih single kapan kawin kapan kawin itu hanya akan membuat teman-teman kita itu semakin stres dan semakin terburu-buru you will do it just create another pressure for this person to rush into a relationship that is maybe not the best not the best yeah just because okay I'm getting tired of getting asked I think stop asking <laughs> kapan kawin kapan kawin yeah. kapan kawin yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah so here you're not as much pressure to go ahead and quickly get married quickly get married like sometimes people will be like oh you got a boyfriend how's your dating life like that kind of thing but um i think there's more emphasis now on you know evolving in like your own personal career and mm. making sure you like seize the day while you're young like don't waste this time like ha go on adventures while you can like there's a lot of that yeah. kind of talk here um so i didn't really have issues with being single and i really did want to use that time to do things that i knew were not going to be as accessible when i was in a relationship like marriage but i think my struggle was as I got older, I was afraid like all the options were going to run out, like less and less people would be available. There wouldn't be as many people to date. Um, I would become less desirable because I'm getting older. And so there's that like constant fear of well, what if it doesn't work out later? Like I could enjoy right now if I knew there was going to be somebody for me later, then I would have the time of my life right now. So it's like that fear of the unknown. Um, yeah. And then also, you know, women, I think, have an extra layer of pressure because there's this like notion of like, well, your biological clock is ticking, tick tock, tick tock, tick tock. Like, mm -hmm. you gotta make sure, you know, if you want kids, you gotta like get on that. Mm -hmm. But I think here there's a lot of like science and medical things going on now that like help women to make those choices for themselves and to help them have children later in life if that is what they desire. Yeah. I just kept trying to tell myself that no matter what situation in life you're in, 
whether you're single, whether you have kids, whether you don't have kids, whether you're married, whether you're not, mm -hmm. no matter what path in life you're on, you're always gonna have things that you are gaining, mm -hmm. but you are always gonna have things that you're sacrificing. Yeah. And it's not that one path is better than the other, it's just a matter of embracing the things and the blessings that come with that season of life. Yeah. And so that kind of like switched in me and I just started to like focus on what are the things that I'm blessed with as a single person and how can I like really make the most of those. And then as that was happening, I just like sort of started to just like trust like if I'm meant to switch seasons or switch into another lifestyle, like that will happen when it happens. But I'm not gonna waste my life wishing for the other lifestyle. Yeah. Okay, so the last thing that I wanted to talk about from the three years of marriage, like you, yeah. earlier, we both have decided that we trust the other person have good intention. You have to trust, like, yeah, that's a good one. yeah. Give them the benefit of the doubt. Yeah. Jadi yeah. kalau misalnya ada ada selisih paham, mm -hmm. when you get like a misunderstanding, you have to uh, believe that it it actually comes from good intention. Right. To begin with, yeah. Because if not, then uh, yang yang ada malah kita jadi curiga. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Ini ini maksudnya apa? Kalau misalnya kita, oh sebenarnya maksudnya dia baik. Gitu. Maksudnya dia baik. Cuman uh, kita. So you gotta put to yourself that okay, maybe we just haven't understood yet. You can. It can become toxic if you kind of get this idea in your head. Yeah. We say like it's the story you're telling yourself. Yeah. If that's Everything the story works. you're telling yourself, then that's what the evidence you're gonna yeah. find. Yeah. Um, and so imagine if you were telling yourself like the opposite story and looking yeah. for evidence of the good things, yeah. you your perspective almost distorts or like gets changed when you're like constantly negative, right? Yeah. But it can also work the other way where if you are focusing on the positive and looking at all the things that that person is doing or like right. imagining that they're doing it from a good place, yeah. then you start to approach conversations with them differently and your behavior changes towards them differently and it becomes this like cycle rather than like yeah. a self-fulfilling prophecy. Exactly, right? because when you believe that your spouse comes from, I mean, anything that she, she does or she says is coming from good intentions, then you will not feel uh, being taken advantage of. Defensiveness. Yeah, and then you. Threatened. Yeah. And also learn to be appreciative yeah. and then learn to apologize. Apologizing is a <laughs> skill that you have to learn. Like, it's yeah. a skill, definitely. Defending yourself is natural. <laughs> but apologizing and admitting that you make mistakes. It's a skill that you have to really continue to I know, exercise. Often the lack of ability to apologize comes from like your own ego and your own pride. Yeah. But actually like a sign of strength and true security with yourself is your ability to, you know, have introspection and see yeah. where were your shortcomings. Because yeah. guaranteed you both are wrong sort of. Yeah. You know? Yeah. You also when your spouse apologized to you, mm -hmm. just this is the toxic word that you should avoid. I told you so. Like, <laughs> like I told you so. I think, uh, itu kan. Gua bilang juga apa. Aku bilang juga apa. Jadi, our spouse uh, admitting and then apologizing is a huge thing. And then if you put another layer, to, I told you so. That means okay. So you're the right, righteous one. So does that mean that next time she or he should listen to you or not? Right. Like a, just like a put yourself in different uh, yeah. level in the scale. Yeah. yeah. Like okay. That's true. So what does that mean? Like yeah. How many times do you think you have arguments? How many times? Yeah, in a year. I think it's in a year. Yeah, in a year. <laughs> like arguments, I like heated we, arguments. I think we probably have like it comes in waves, but depending on like the stresses in our lives. Yeah. But if you were to average it out, maybe like really heated ones where we have to like come back and discuss and like reflect by ourselves maybe like once a month once a month yeah maybe i think even not once a not month. not even that much yeah not e i don't remember when was the last time that's we what i mean like we even... might go through a season where that yeah. happens like we'll have a few in a row yeah but maybe it's because there's a build up you know and then we'll have like seasons when it's yeah. like, pretty 
you know. I think it works well for us right now that we we do have heated arguments definitely, but it's not like every day. It's not every no, week. Oh gosh. Because some people do have like arguments every week. <laughs> Yeah. And I know that that's like hard. that's hard. Like that. That's very hard. Yeah. But I can see how escalation things can evolve into that. And yeah. I think it it can it starts to deteriorate when you have these things that are yeah. not that you're not yeah. doing. You yeah. Know? So, like grace and being apologetic and yeah. putting yourself in their shoes. Like if you don't have these things in place that you yeah. are actively trying to do, I can see how like you'd be set off by yeah. like this, that, this person did this, and now I'm mad about this, and now I'm mad about this, and then, they, you know, it's like... Yeah, and sometimes you don't play dumb. Like, sometimes you know that, okay, my spouse is upset about this one, yeah. but because maybe he or she doesn't bring it up yet, maybe she's not ready, just give them some time, but after some time, you're still still like a... Not saying, not saying anything. And then you know that something is not right. You want to start the conversation. Hey, I yeah. mean, are you upset about something? Yeah. Yeah. Right? I think that's what we've been doing too. Whenever we think that the other person is suddenly changed, exactly. Yeah. Like anything right. wrong or something, and then just be honest about that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I think too, we're both yeah. like peace seekers. Like we don't like yeah. an environment that yeah. is has discord. So we work really hard yeah. to like correct that. Yeah. So. And how can you sleep next to somebody when you have <laughs> grudged and... <laughs> It's yeah, <laughs> you, you, it's just like hard when you sleep next yeah. to someone. So try to like resolve that in that day. Take some time and then just put your pride outside. Yeah, <laughs> yeah put your pride outside, especially men. I know. Yeah. I didn't say it. <laughs> no, I know. Like, like, we have huge ego. <laughs> <laughs> we have huge ego and pride. So yeah. I think that's one of the things that, uh, that works for us. One other thing that I wanted to say also that I think I learned as a husband in three years of marriage that if I want to be honest, I know that Kate as a housewife, she works longer hours than me, to be honest. I think you work longer hours. You wake up from seven and then you hand Ruth over at seven. So that alone is already 12 hours because I woke up and then I go to work and went to work and then I come back usually. I took Ruth to yeah. put her to sleep that's a week like seven yeah. o'clock so seven to seven is already 12 hours yeah. uninterrupted with Ruth only with Ruth like me going to work I see another adult yeah and then another adult people having a conversation yeah. I take breaks and then hear yeah. it. so I think on that domain she worked longer hours not only that after handing over Ruth to me she is the one that usually prepares dinner and then do the cleanup and everything until like eight or nine. So that alone additional two hours. And then after that, she sit down and then spend some time with me for another hour. And then that's already like long stress. So 14 hours and then the last hour to spend time with me. So recognize that your wife has sacrificed a lot. Yeah. Has sacrificed a lot. So. Uh, in this in this in this domain you have to help out <laughs> you gotta help out you gotta help out as much as as you can because stay at home with the with the baby it's, it's not easy no it's not easy it's challenging in that you're just constantly needed yeah. all day by another person mm -hmm. or watching and you making sure work. making sure making sure that this is making sure making yeah. sure and there's this like constant sense of like you just can't sit for a minute you know and, and and so that's tiring in a different way and at the same time you have to educate them mm -hmm. the basic ways yeah. of how to live as a human or a behavior <laughs> behavior yes. right yes all of and that. like a human one on one lesson yeah. and then i'm so used to like i just told you all, i'm a very social yeah. person so i'm used to being like stimulated by like adult conversation yeah. and like problems and creative tasks and, and suddenly like I don't have time to do any of that and you have to teach the basics and I have to go back to the basics and I have to have conversations with my daughter who's one and a half you yeah. know and I'm just like dying for yeah like it's, a little break from that you know at times it's and super so. hard it's super hard so just like understand that your wife at home is not just sitting and sleeping. I'm not lounging on the sofa yeah, no, with my no. you know drink and my iPhone all day long yeah, and then do the meal planning is also like another 
I don't know, like a not easy thing to do. Like you have to do the meal planning for the baby, you know, mm -hmm. so for the family. Yeah. So that's one thing that I think I appreciate a lot from you. Mm -hmm. And I feel like, okay, it's not fair to just come home and then expect me to, even though I work, if you have long hours and then you also like, I do also like some part-time job, but that doesn't, doesn't justify me from not doing anything in the house as much as I can. I know it's very little compared to what she does, mm -hmm. but just try to like help her out. Yeah. I think that's huge and then your wife will appreciate that if you do that in, mm -hmm. to your wife. Just don't sure. feel entitled. Okay, I'm the one that bringing home the paycheck and then I deserve to just lounge. No. And then no, 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 because your wife also Was works. also working and she doesn't yeah. have a paycheck for her she work. Does, yeah, exactly. Like a, paycheck for and then now mm -hmm. she gotta serve the baby serve you I mean you're mm -hmm. you're not marrying a slave <laughs> <laughs> okay yeah. yeah so just like uh, be mindful of your role to in the house that can help good help so yeah. one doesn't feel like I have given too much and then one doesn't feel like okay I think I'm being taken advantage of right so thank you so much for listening and joining us for this conversation. Yeah. We had a lot of fun reflecting on our last three years and yeah. just some of the things yeah. we have um, learned from each other and with, about ourselves. And yeah. of course, maybe the most exciting part of, you know, being married is getting to raise this little baby together. Much. We love you. And look, she's wearing love, 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 love. 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 Yeah. Jadi teman-teman jangan lupa uh, tinggalkan komentar di bawah. Ya, yeah, yeah. Dan subscribe. Subscribe. Dan share this one to your friends and family. Yeah, and please, please, please leave your comments. Give us advice that you have. Maybe no. some of you have been married way longer than I three know. years. Maybe those. So we would love to hear, yeah. you know, what you've learned in your experiences. Yeah, yeah. and just uh, to keep in mind that we are not trying to uh, be experts, but, be experts <laughs> but this is we shared what we have learned yeah. along uh, yeah. the experience. Yeah. So yeah. hopefully you find something good about that. Yeah. yeah good value about these conversations and awesome. until next time. Yeah. Bye bye now. Ta da. Ta da. Ta da. Yeah. Ta da. Bye bye. Bye bye. We want to share you uh, uh, the first year of marriage. <laughs> oh, we were just us with a doggy. Two dogs. Oh, two. We thought that we knew. I think, well, we might. No, just cut that part. I would spend hours with somebody. Yeah. And you're like, okay, we spend like time. I think my currency is also like food. Oh my gosh, yeah. <laughs> but that's gonna be a different like a conversation too. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so I was 32? Yeah. Because I got pregnant when I was 33. I had a baby when I was 33. Yeah, so that's true, right? Yeah. Yeah, I had her right before I turned 34. Okay. okay. <laughs> Did I tell yeah. them when I got married? Huh? Did I tell them how old I was? I told them already. Okay. <laughs> yeah. See you. <laughs> yeah. Because that can be like... Stop. Yeah. yeah. Of course, maybe the most exciting... Oh! Tunggu, tunggu, tunggu. Lihat, lihat, lihat.